Imagine that there are two types of work that you do. There's work that we will call work number one. And this work is work as work that has big potential consequences. That if you do this and you do it well, it makes a big difference in your life, your family, and everything else. The other type of work you do is what we call work number two. And this work has no potential consequences. So the first category of work moves you toward your most important goals faster than anything else. This other type of work does not move you towards your goals, and even worse, it moves you away from your goals. Examples of time that you waste doing things of no value. Here's a simple way to become one of the highest paid and most productive people in society. Do only number one tasks. Do only those things that are moving you every day toward the goals that you say you want to achieve. You want to earn more money, be happier, be healthier, move up in your business, have a nice house, set a car, travel, only do those things all day long. If you only do those things all day long, if you only do those things, the things that have great potential consequences, it transforms your life. Here's another discovery. 95 of what you do comes from habit. And if you do something repeatedly over and over again, what do you develop? A new habit. You develop a new habit. You've heard the rule, the 80-20 rule of the Pareto Principle. The top 20 of salespeople make 80 of the sales and the bottom 80 salespeople make 20 of the salespeople make 20 of the sales. Do you know what the difference in the ratio is? The ratio is the difference between 16 to 1. The average income of people in the top 20 is 16 times the average income of the people in the bottom 80. Now, let me ask you a question. Doesn't mean the people in the top 20 are 16 times better than the people in the bottom 80, 16 times more experience. Do they work 16 times the number of hours? Do they have 16 times the number of years of education? Are they 16 times more handsome? Are they 16 times anything? You know that it's not humanly possible to be twice as smart as somebody else unless you're looking at very, very unintelligent people and very, very brilliant people. But there's really not humanly possible, on average, for us to even be twice as smart as anybody else. Yet 20 of these people are making 16 times the average of the rest in our society. It is a lot of controversy, or why should I work so hard for my job? The fact of the matter is that less than five really succeed. That's less than five of the population really succeeding in life. If you have 100 people working today, only one will be wealthy when they retire. Four will be financially independent. Fifteen will have some savings. Eighty percent will be broke and dependent upon charities and pensions. Only one or two percent of people in each generation really make it in life. And in every single study, those people who make it are those who work hard, 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 hard. And if you think that it's hard to be successful, try being a failure. Try coming to the end of the trail with no money dependent upon pensions and you don't know what hard is until you try living like that. But if you work hard, the average self, mid-millionaire in America, works 12 to 13 hours a day, works about 60 to 65 hours a day, works about 60 to 65 hours a week. I'll tell you this with regard to hard work. You and our society only work 8 hours a day for survival. Everything over 8 hours is for success. And if you're only working 8 hours a day, you're in trouble. If you're only working 8 hours a day, you better have a rich uncle or you better have somebody else who's going to take care of you because 8 hours a day only gets you survival in our society. Because it's so competitive that somebody else is working 9. They've got an edge on you. Somebody else is working 10. They've got a bigger edge on you. Every hour or 8 that you invest is an investment in your future, is an investment in your future, is an investment in your success. And if you put in the hours over eight, whether it's studying or reading or working, if you put in the hours, it will pay off. And it will pay off in spades. It's like throwing seed in the ground. When you throw a seed in the ground, the plant that comes up is not just one seed. It's hundreds of seeds. There's a crop that you put in, but you must put the seed in the ground first. The market only pays excellent rewards for excellent performance. It pays average rewards for average performance. It pays below average rewards for below average performance. And I talk to men and women all over America who are unhappy and they're sad and they don't like their work. 
And you know why? It's because they're not good at what they're doing. So your earning ability is the most powerful and most valuable financial asset you have. And your earning ability, by definition, is your ability to get results that people will pay you for. Now, this doesn't mean that you are not a valuable person. Each human being is of incredible value. But some people's earning ability is much higher than others, and your earning ability is an asset. So it can be either increasing in value, or decreasing in value, or decreasing in value. Now here's what they studied. Here's what they found in the studies. The 80-20 rule. They found that the bottom 80% of people, the ones who struggle for money and worry about money all their lives, these people, when they take their first job, will work to a certain level and then they will level off and never improve for the rest of their lives unless they're forced to. And so, therefore, 10 years after starting work, the average person today is no more productive at getting results than they were after one year. But they find that the people in the top 20% are very different. The people in the bottom 80% increase their income about 2 or 3% per year over the years. In the top 20% increase their income at an average of about 11% per year. If your income goes up 11% per year, you will double your income every six or seven years, and then you will double it again, and then you'll double it again, and then you'll double it again, and soon you'll live in a beautiful house, and you'll drive a nice car, and you'll send your children to private schools, and you'll have a nice bank account, and you'll be happy. But if you don't keep increasing your income, nothing good will happen. Now, what is the difference? The answer is the people in the bottom 80 don't learn anymore after they leave school. But the people in the top 20 are always learning new things. And as a result, they are increasing their earning ability. People in the top 10% in every field think in terms of their hourly rate. How much I earn each hour. Now this change in thinking changes your entire life. I know because I've taught this principle to thousands of people who literally transform their lives and their incomes almost overnight. If you think in terms of how much you earn in a week or a month, well, then you have a natural tendency to waste time during the day. Monday is a slow day. You're recovering from the weekend. Tuesday, you start to work. Wednesday, the week is almost over. Thursday, you start to slow down. And now it's Friday. Who gets anything done on Friday? We'll do it on Monday. And so people's ability to produce drops, drops, and drops. And since 80% of the population thinks like this, if you're not careful, you'll find you are surrounded by people who waste tea time. So when you start thinking in terms of your hourly rate, it transforms your life. Poor folks have poor ways, and it's really hard to get over. Poor folks have poor ways. Always remember that poor folks have poor ways. They think poor, they think cheap, they think saving, they think spending as little as possible, they think a little money they have. But you find that successful people have successful people have successful thinking. They think very, very differently than poor people. And so remember that poor folks have poor ways, but rich folks have rich ways. It's because people who make a lot of money, my friend Jim Ron said, he said the most important part of becoming a millionaire is not money, but it's the person you have to become to become, to become a millionaire. You have to become a totally different person to go from zero to being worth more than a million dollars. But the good news is that if you lost all of your money because of a crash in the economy or something else, you can make it all back again because now you're the kind of person who can make it. Once you become a millionaire in your thinking, then it's only a matter of time before you quickly restore that amount of money in your reality. So the starting point is to change our thinking, which we have said over and over again, and I've written extensively on this. For the path of least resistance is a really big killer. What it is, is the tendency to look for the easy way, the fast way, the cheap way, the cheap way, the method of least effort or least cost to achieve things. And what we have in our society today, which is as a result of several generations of affluence, is we have an enormous number of people who are literally addicted to the shortcut, the easy way, the fast, quick way. There's an old saying with regard to these get rich quick schemes, when a man with experience meets a man with money. The man with money is going to end up with the experience. And the man with experience will end up with the money. So you'll find that the newspapers and magazines and television are all full of get rich 
quick schemes because there's always people who think it's possible to get rich quick, get rich easy. All you have to do is find a trick or a gimmick. And there's an enormous number of people who say rich people are just people who are lucky. You know, they just had a gimmick. They just had a trick. Eh. The fact is that the rich have been studied at great length. It takes about 22 years from the time you decide to become a millionaire before you hit a million dollars net worth, including your house. I think it's about 22 years on average, based on the studies of many thousands and tens of thousands of self-made millionaires. People say, wow, that's a long time. If it is, get on with it. So people start at 20, by the age of 42, they're millionaires. By the age of 45, they're dual millionaires. By the age of 55, because as we say, the first million is hard, the second 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 million is inevitable. And so what you do is you have to make the first million. Why is that? Because you have to become a very different, disciplined, higher form of human being to actually make such a contribution that you actually earn and hold on to more than a million dollars. It forces you to become somebody really different than you've ever been before. Financial freedom is a real big issue today. Financial freedom means that you don't worry about money. Worries about money, by the way, are the number one reason for marital breakdown. Worries, disagreements, arguments over money. So if you have problems with money, they affect your relationship. You have problems with your relationship, they affect your health. If they have problems with your health, it affects your peace of mind. And money is a major issue. We've been living through the most affluent country in the most affluent time in all of human history. For the last 50 years, we've grown up in a level of affluence that is unimaginable for 95% of the world. And we have come to believe that this is what we're entitled to. You grow up in America, you're entitled to a fat life. One of the things that is leading to major, major social disruptions is a lot of people are finding that it's not true anymore. It's today, if you want to be financially successful, you're going to have to work very, very hard. You're going to have to get up early and hit it hard and work all day and work into the evening. You're going to have to work six days a week. There's no six, no wealthy people who work five days a week. Zero, nada, none. There's no successful people who work five days a week because if you work five days a week, you actually only work about four. You start late, you leave early and you waste time all day long. Successful people work long days and they work into the weekend. However, they're doing something they enjoy and they're doing something they get tremendous satisfaction from because they're making progress and as a result, it's really not work. You know the old rule, I found something I love to do and I never worked again the rest of my life. I work seven days a week but I never worked a day. And you'll find that when you do that, which you will, before we are finished, when you start to find what it is that you would love to do and put your whole heart into it, you never work again. And you get paid more than you ever dreamed of and you don't even care. You don't even count the money anymore because you're just getting so much satisfaction from using yourself at the very highest level. And so financial freedom, this is something we people have to start thinking about. The worst thing you can do today is to be in debt. As you know, as they say, the debt comes and goes, but the interest payments stay forever. And it's the interest that kills you. It's the constant payment. Look at that. So one of our goals is to achieve financial freedom, and this isn't something that happens by accident. We don't say, well, geez, I got to show up. I'm financially free this morning. No, but what we have to do is we have to sit down and make a plan, and we have to work on it for a long, long time. It's not something you can do once. It's something you need to do throughout your career. And too many people today are deeply in debt. You know, 70% of Americans live from paycheck to paycheck. 70% of Americans, what that means is that they have no money, they have no reserves. The average American family at the age of 40 for the major breadwinner has a total net worth of about $40,000. And that's including the equity in their home. At the age of 60, they have a net worth of about $62,000, an average of about $1,000 a year. Most people without pensions, that's why there's so much political controversy. Without pensions, most people would be destitute. They'd be impoverished because they have nothing. 70% have nothing. Why? It's not because they haven't earned a lot of money. 
You know that if you saved a hundred dollars a month for your entire working lifetime, you'd be worth more than a million dollars when you retire. A hundred dollars a month. If somebody put a gun to your head, could you save a hundred dollars a month? Yes, if your whole future depended upon it, could you just save a hundred dollars a month? Well, it does. And people don't even say that, they spend it. They buy stuff they don't need to impress people they don't like. So here's where we start with our entrepreneurs. We say there are four keys. One is to clarify. Clarity is 95% of your success. Be absolutely clear about who you are, what you want, and your goals. Second is to simplify, strip out, and get rid of all the extraneous things in your life that are bogging you down. Number three is to maximize, and maximize is to take your special talents, abilities, and opportunities and really develop them to a high level. Number four is to multiply, and that is to leverage your talents and abilities. So, here's the definition. We say clarify is developing absolute clarity about who you are. One of the things we do is we help people take assessments to determine who they are, what they like to do, what they're supposed to be doing, and we find that if you're in the wrong career for you, you'll never have any excitement about it, you'll never have any desire to get better at it. But if you change and you start doing what is right for you, you suddenly come alive. You become excited about what you're doing. So, who you are, what you want, and the best way to achieve it? Clarity, clarity, clarity. Second is to simplify. Simplify. Simplify means to delegate, outsource, and eliminate low value, no value tasks and activities in your life. In other words, look at the things you do in your life that contribute very little, very little to your success. But you keep doing them anyway. You'll find that about 80% of your life is trivia. Remember the 80-20 rule? 20% of what you do accounts for 80% of your results. Success, reward, satisfaction, happiness, joy. Everything is in the top 20%, which means the bottom 80%. Which means the bottom 80% could be cut out completely and have no negative effect on your life. What do most people spend most of their time on? Bottom 80%. You know, television watching. Since the last time we did this conference, this seminar just a few months ago, at that time it was 150 hours a month for the average adults in America. It's up to 158 hours in less than a year. The average American is watching five and a half to six hours over five hours of television per day. The average non-adult is on social media five hours a day. Television watching, by the way, for young people is dropping dramatically. The networks are going bonkers. But it's older people who are not high techs. They watch television five hours a day. Just imagine if you took two of those hours and you read something worthwhile, you'd be rich in a few years. Television makes you poor. They did an interesting study. They took people from socioeconomic categories. Wall Street Journal. They found, uh, as you went down the socioeconomic categories, to the poorest of the poor, they had no books in their homes and the biggest televisions they could afford. As you went up to the top and they watched about seven hours of television a day. As they began to go up in terms of income, television watching decreased until they got to the top five or ten percent. These people very seldom watch television. They would pre-record something and watch it at their leisure later on in the evenings or on the weekends very seldom watch television and their homes were full. So if you wanted to get into the top 10%, what you do is you have to do things at the top 10% of people do. Good morning. You're about to start a trip that will change your life and your finances forever. I'd like to share with you today a powerful method, a success plan that could triple your income and make you a millionaire. Though. Before we get into the details of this method, I want you to picture the life you want to live. Imagine that you have everything you need and don't have to think about money. Think about how powerful and satisfying it would be to reach your biggest dreams. Keep that vision in mind because with the way I'm about to show you, it is not only possible but actually within your reach. These are some of the world's most successful people who have tried and tested this method. If you follow it with commitment and focus, it can change your financial future. Friends, if you want to learn how to get rich and take charge of your life and money, then come with me as we look at the millionaire method. We will start a journey together that will lead to wealth, success, and finally, the life of your dreams. 
You are fully in charge of your present and what you are right now. You are the only one who can change your world. Your present life is the result of all the choices and actions you've made so far. But you can change it and make a better future based on the person you want to be and the goals you want to reach in your life. You can make decisions and choices that are more in line with your goals and needs. The only limits on what you can be, do, and have are the ones you put on yourself and your thoughts. You will be in charge of your own life if you take responsibility for your thoughts, words, and deeds. From now on, it's important to learn how to be financially successful from people who went from being poor to being rich in just one generation. You need to learn how to think faster, make smarter choices, and act more effectively than other people. I promise that you will reach your financial goals faster than you think possible if I teach you how to order your money. You are now ready to learn how to form habits that will turn you into a real winner, teach you self-control and discipline, and help you make important choices that will lead you to success. Let's start. The good news is that you can learn any skill by doing it over and over again. You can learn any trait that you think is important or useful. You can change your attitude and character in any way you want if you are determined and follow through. Your own story will be written by you. And if you're unhappy with your present situation, you can start over. The same way that your good habits have helped you be successful and happy, your bad habits are to blame for your problems and annoyances. You can learn bad habits, but you can also unlearn them and learn good ones through the same process of practice and repeat. Get into the habit of feeding your thoughts with good things. It's important to remember that outside things like radio, TV, newspapers, magazines, ads, and talks with other people can have a big effect on you. Because your mind is the most important thing you have. You need to keep it safe and clear, focused on what you want, and away from anything that could be bad. Get rid of the unnecessary and disturbing TV shows. Do not read about killings, robberies, and other tragic events in the newspapers that are meant to shock you. Don't pay attention to radio talk that says nothing useful about the problems in the world right now. Do not keep talking about the political and social problems in your town or country for hours on end. Make sure your mind is free, clean, and full of good things. You will not only become what you think, but also what you feed your mind on a daily basis. Read and watch positive educational programs. Get positive ideas and information from other experts in your field. And talk to positive, goal-oriented people. If you want to be a positive, happy person, all of these things will help. Getting used to being around people you respect and admire who have the same traits you want to have is important. Do not have coffee with just anyone in the room. Don't go out with the first person who invites you after work. Know exactly what kind of people you want to talk to and listen to in order to change the way you think and feel. If you spend a lot of time with five people, Tony Robbins says that your pay will be about the same as theirs. In your case, who are those people? If you want to be the best version of yourself, you need to make it a habit to take action. Studies of successful people in almost any field show that those who are focused on action are the ones who really run their lives and jobs to be action-oriented. You need to make it a habit to act quickly on an idea or chance. Your mind is always working on the things you can do. Going after your goals or getting the results you want is what it means to adopt. You don't keep talking about what you're going to do in the future. Instead, you do something right now. After having a clear picture of your ideal future and making plans and goals, it is important to come up with a strategy that will help you be the best at what you do. You have to make a promise to keep learning and form the habit of making decisions, taking the lead in all areas of your life and work that matter. It's better to learn how to make things happen than to just sit back and wait for them to happen. People who want to change things should not wait for things to get better. They should instead make the changes themselves. What you need to realize is that changing your thoughts and becoming a great person is not easy and can't be done without help from other people. You can do it, though, if you take responsibility for your character and personality growth and work on it. You must act right away if you have thought of a way to make any part of your life better. Don't wait. Do it now. Bring about a sense of need and hurry. Making a name for yourself as someone who acts quickly on any idea or chance that comes up is important. One of the most important habits you can form is this one. Taking full responsibility for your money is the first thing you need to do to become financially independent and a millionaire. 
lot of people never do this and instead hope for the best and that someone will save them. They bet and buy lottery tickets because they think it will make them rich. Besides that, they worry all the time about their, put their money in the stock market. Big bucks don't just appear out of thin air, but most rich people plan their finances so that their, their net worth grows by 8 to 10 percent each year compared to the money they have worked for. They're not looking for quick ways to get rich or simple ways to make money. They are careful, patient, and relentless. They put in the effort every year to save money and build it up. It's not something they do to guess, take chances, or look for easy ways to make money quickly. Their wealth grows every year because of how they think about and focus on money. They eventually make more than a million dollars and generally keep getting richer. The business thinker Jim Rohn said, but becoming a millionaire isn't hard, but it's not the most important thing either. Getting rich has made you a better person. That's the most important thing. This idea is great for getting a million dollars. If you want to be rich, you need to think about things very differently than most people who worry about money all the time. You need to change your character, attitude, and habits if you want to reach your financial goals and keep your money. Getting the first million is very hard, but getting the second is almost certain, said my financial planner. As soon as you can accumulate a million dollars or more, you'll be able to make a second and third million. Should something bad happen and you lose all your money, you would be able to get it back quickly because you've become the kind of person who can become a millionaire. Once you become that person, you will always be able to do that. Austerity is one of the easiest habits to spot in the rich. Rich people are careful with their money, handle it well, and only invest after giving it a lot of thought. They'd rather buy used things than new ones, avoid borrowing if they can, and borrow money only when they have to. A saying in English says, if you watch out for the pennies, the pounds will stay safe. As kids, people who have become millionaires learn to save money and spend it. Rich man W. Clement Stone once said, if you can't save, then the seeds of greatness aren't within you. The Richest Man in Babylon, a best-selling book by George Clayson, says that the key to making money is to pay yourself first. You have no choice but to save at least 10% of your cash before you spend it on anything else. For the rest of your working life, remember that people are flexible and can adapt to any situation. You will quickly get used to a slightly less fancy but just as comfortable way of life if you learn to live on 90% of your pay and save the rest. You won't have to worry about this new way of life for long. It will become a habit. Being persistent and not giving up is the key. Don't wait any longer. Start looking after your money right away. You are about to go through an amazing change in your finances. You'll be surprised at how much less you spend over time once you make it a habit to carefully think about your income and savings. You'll start getting rid of your bills and not taking on anymore. You will put off and avoid spending, and you might even decide not to buy something. At the same time, your savings will grow because you are eager to save some of your salary. In just one year, you'll have an extra hundred dollars. In two years, you'll have thousands. And in 10 or 20 years, you'll have hundreds of thousands or even a million dollars. As your bank account grows, make it a habit to add extra money to it when you don't expect it. This will help it grow even faster. Put money from a bonus at work, a tax return, or the sale of something into your account instead of spending it right away. These steps will not only make you happy, but they will also give your savings magical energy. Your friends will pay back the bills they owe you, and new ways will open up for you to make extra cash. You could even sell old things you didn't think were worth anything. It's said that adding money to your account makes you feel better and brings more money into your life. Now is the time to form good money habits that will help you get the wealth you deserve. Instead of trying to get rich quickly, learn the secrets of wealthy people and build your wealth over time. And to do this, you need to follow two important money rules. First rule is don't waste your money. Rule two, if you ever want to break this rule, just remember the first one. Individuals who become wealthy think about their money a great deal more than those who are poor. Millionaires study, analyze, and plan their finances for 20 to 30 hours a month, while the average person only spends 2 to 3 hours a month on their finances, usually when they have to pay bills. Simply put, giving your finances a lot of thought makes the choices you make about them a lot better. People who spend more time planning their finances always make better choices and get better results. Getting help from a financial expert before making any decisions about your accounts is one of the best habits you can form. Talk to people in your inner circle to find an advisor who has invested their own money 
successfully in the same places they tell you to. How well you can pick good financial advisors will have a big impact on the investments you make. Make sure you get the best advice possible to make sure you're successful with your money. Get into the habit of studying before you invest. The rule is that you should study the investment for as long as it takes you to earn the money you want to spend. Remember that when you're in a hurry, making choices about money usually doesn't turn out well. It's very important to give yourself time. Take your time and carefully look over every aspect of the investment you want to make before you write the check. No one should ever force you to make an investment choice. Don't ever feel like you need to act quickly and make a choice right away. A rich person I worked for once told me, investment chances are like buses. There will always be another one. Soon after you start getting rich, make it a habit to keep your assets safe from needless taxes and big cases. Pay for the help of a lawyer who specializes in wills and estate planning. With the help of a good lawyer, set up a family limited liability company and move your assets to it. This way your assets won't be taken away from you in bad situations or if you get sued. It is said that being safe is better than being sorry. Plan ahead, do your study, keep your assets safe. These small steps can save you a lot of money as you work toward financial independence. Get better at negotiating so that you can get higher prices when you're selling and cheaper prices when you're buying. In any business deal, a good broker can save or make 10%, 20% or even more. For every dollar you earn or save, you can add it to your savings account. Learn how to bargain and ask for lower loan rates. If you're selling something, look for better terms and conditions and expect payment right away. If you're buying something, look for ways to pay later. Always be nice, polite, ready to help and sure of yourself. Don't be afraid to ask for what you want though. If you don't get it the first time, try again or ask for something different. People who become very wealthy very quickly in the stock market, in business, in show business, or in any other area make headlines in newspapers and magazines. This isn't typical though, because most people get rich slowly thanks to the power of compound interest, which is sometimes called the most powerful force in the world. For 99% of millionaires, their wealth was built up over a long period of time thanks to the slow growth of compound interest. If you spend and protect your money the right way, every dollar you save can grow by 5 to 10% a year. Your money grows and grows until it reaches a certain amount. When someone first started to seriously think about their money, it usually took them 22 years to save up a million dollars. Over time, they get richer by taking advantage of smart investments that make it get their money grow and multiply over time and making it easier for them to earn money. You need to do the same thing. To wrap up, dear friend, the philosopher Aristotle says that being happy is the most important thing in life. Developing wealthy habits that will make you financially independent is a great goal, but it's not the most important one. Being brave, honest, serious, and determined are important parts of what it means to become an adult. To be truly happy and satisfied with yourself and other parts of your life, you need to be financially successful for a long time. That is the most important goal. As our talk comes to a close, I want you to remember that you have the power to triple your income and become a millionaire. You have to be committed, dedicated, and ready to take bold actions. But know this, you have the power to change your financial future and make your life full of wealth. Put the things you've learned today to use with unwavering drive. Don't lose sight of your plan for success. Set clear goals and take calculated chances. Remember that each step you take toward your dreams brings you closer to making them come true. Friends, now you should go out with confidence and bravery. If you think like a millionaire, your income will grow faster than you could have imagined. It might not always be easy, but you can do great things if you keep going. Have the right attitude. Thanks for going with me on this trip. May you fully and enthusiastically follow the millionaire way and may it bring you a life full of plenty, happiness and satisfaction. Good morning, dear friends. I invite you to take a moment to pause and contemplate the boundless potential that lies within the next 24 hours. Today is not just another ordinary day. 
It is a canvas waiting to be painted with the vibrant colors of possibility, adventure, and serendipity. As you sit here, surrounded by the gentle hum of life unfolding around you, I want you to know that something truly extraordinary is on the horizon for each and every one of you. Imagine, if you will, that the universe has conspired to bring forth a series of events, encounters, and revelations that are tailor-made for your growth, fulfillment, and joy. Picture yourself walking through the day with a heightened sense of awareness, eagerly anticipating the magical moments that await you at every turn. Whether it's a chance encounter with a long-lost friend, an unexpected opportunity that propels you closer to your dreams, or a sudden insight that illuminates the path ahead, something extraordinary is poised to make its grand entrance into your life today. But here's the secret. You must be open to receiving it. You must approach the day with a sense of wonder, curiosity, and receptivity, ready to embrace whatever gifts the universe has in store for you. Set aside any doubts or limitations that may be holding you back, and instead, allow yourself to bask in the infinite possibilities that abound in every moment. As you journey through the day, I encourage you to pay attention to the subtle whispers of the universe, the synchronicities, the signs, and the nudges that gently guide you toward your highest good. Trust in the wisdom of the universe and know that everything that happens today is happening for you, not to you. So my friends, let us embark on this adventure together with open hearts and open minds. Let us greet the day with a sense of excitement and anticipation, knowing that something extraordinary is just around the corner. Get ready to welcome the magic into your life, for today is your day, and something truly remarkable is going to happen to you. You are extraordinary. You are unique. The odds of there being someone exactly like you are more than 50,000 million to one. Every part of your body, according to anatomists, physiologists, and doctors, is different from anyone else who has ever lived. Your fingerprints are unique. Even your footprints and earprints are different. You are unlike anyone else. Self-knowledge begins by accepting that you are a unique and special individual and that you have the ability to do something wonderful with your life. That said, you are also like everyone else in relation to certain basic principles. Throughout human history, the smartest men and women who have ever lived have sought answers to the question of the human dilemma. What can people do to change the quality of their lives, their relationships, and their results? Great philosophers, metaphysicians, and scholars have pondered this, sometimes for their entire lives. In this century, I know men and women who have spent 10, 20, 30, 40, and even 50 years studying success and achievement to discover rules and general principles that we can apply to be more successful. The first thing we must begin with in this whole course, the psychology of achievement, is that you are a mental being. The only thing that truly makes you unique is your mind. Everything else you share with a horse or a pig, your mind is what makes you unique. Your body simply carries your mind around just as electricity follows laws of electricity, physics follows laws of physics and nature follows laws of nature. There are certain mental laws that determine everything that happens to you. These mental laws are as inexorable as the laws of gravity. They work 100% of the time. The first mental principle, and we will return to it again and again, is what we call the law of control. The law of control is very simple. It's a basic law, and we will return to it again and again. It simply says that you feel good about yourself, you feel positive about yourself, to the extent that you feel you are in control of your own life. Or you feel negative about yourself to the extent that you feel you are not in control of your own life. You just have to look at your life today and ask yourself in what parts of your life you feel better, in what parts of your life you feel more in control. You will find that those are the places where you are happiest. Since the ultimate human good is to achieve a state of happiness expressed in mental peace, health, love, and relationships, control is absolutely essential. Psychologists call this the difference between an internal locus of control, which is feeling that you are in charge of your own life, versus an external locus of control, which means feeling that something outside of you, whether it's your debts, your relationships, your work, or your health, in some way is controlling you. In fact, research into locus of control. And there are many tests you can take to determine where you are on this graph, in terms of locus of control, and in what areas of your life you feel more and less in control. People with a very high internal locus of control are high performance people. They are more successful. They are more self-determined and they are happier. 
Many of the things we are trying to do in this course are to give you a much greater sense of control, of being in charge of every aspect of your life. Control begins with your thoughts. Interestingly, your thoughts, what you think about things and how you think, determine your values, determine what is happening inside you. Once stored, your thoughts determine your feelings. It's how you think about something that determines your feelings, whether you're happy or unhappy, scared or confident. Your feelings then determine your actions. We start with the law of control, saying that the key to success is feeling that you are the master of your own destiny, that you are behind the wheel of your own life, that you are in charge of your life by taking complete and total control over your thoughts. Your thoughts will control your feelings. Your feelings will control your actions and your actions. Always remember, your actions will determine your success or your lack of success. The law of control is important. Now, in contrast to the law of control, we have what is called the law of chance. The law of chance is really a metaphysical principle. It's just a law, like a traffic law, or like a legal law. To the extent that we consistently live in accordance with it, the law of chance is what about 80% of the population lives more or less. The law of chance simply states that by not planning, you are planning to fail. Not planning is planning to fail. Most people don't believe they live according to this, but if you look at their lives, you'll see that it's true. Not planning means planning for failure. These are the people who say, well, it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's being in the right place at the right time. It's luck. It's the luck of the draw, and so on. These are individuals who, feeling that their lives are controlled by forces outside themselves, lack clear plans, lack clear goals, don't work persistently and steadily every day to achieve something they want, and their lives simply seem adrift and going in circles like a rudderless ship. A person, like a ship without a rudder, a person without a central plan, is a person who has very little control. A person who feels that they are indeed out of control of their life, as if they are falling through space without a place to stop. And these people are invariably unhappy. The reason people are negative today, the reason people are unhappy, the reason people are sick and frustrated, the reason people don't reach their full potential in life is that most of them live according to this law of chance. And by doing so, they don't have a clear sense of control over their lives. They don't have a sense of inner peace. They don't have a sense of happiness, and so on. We will show you how to free yourself from the personal law of chance permanently. Now the next law is what is called the law of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect says that for every effect in your life, there is a specific cause. Everything that happens in the universe happens for a reason. That nothing happens by accident. That failure does not happen by accident. And success does not happen by accident. That happiness or lack of happiness is the result of cause and effect relationships. If we have an effect in your life that you want more of, whether it's more success, more money, more happiness, better health, you can trace it back to a cause. And what you do is repeat and duplicate that cause. If you have an effect in your life that you want less of, if you have problems or difficulties, you can also trace it back to a cause. All progress in human life and in human society comes from identifying the causes of what we want more or less of and changing those causes. We're going to show you how to free yourself from the personal law of chance permanently. Now the next law is what is called the law of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect says that for every effect in your life there is a specific cause. Everything that happens in the universe has a reason. Nothing happens by accident. Failure does not happen by accident. And success doesn't either. Happiness or lack of it is a result of causal relationships. If there is an effect in your life that you want more of, whether it's more success, more money, more happiness, or better health, you can trace it back to a cause and repeat and duplicate that cause. If there is an effect in your life that you want less of, if you have problems and difficulties, you can also trace it back to a cause. All progress in human life and in society comes from identifying the causes of what we want more or less of and changing those causes. The law of cause and effect is the iron law of the universe. It's a law that you'll come back to time and time again. And many of our laws are paraphrasing of the iron law, also called the law of sowing and reaping. What you sow, that you shall also reap. But the iron law, the law of cause and effect, gives us a complete sense of control. If we believe that there is a cause and effect relationship, that everything happens for a reason, then we have a tremendous feeling of control in our lives. We can identify the causes, duplicate them, and make our lives whatever we want.
The most important application of the law of cause and effect is this. Thoughts are causes and conditions are effects. Thoughts are simply causes and conditions are simply effects. The starting point of everything is your thoughts about something. It's your thoughts about a job, your thoughts about a relationship, your thoughts about your health, your thoughts about your future. Your thoughts become causative agents and conditions become effects. If you want to change any of the conditions in your life, you must change the thoughts that precede those conditions. You must change what is happening in your mind. Fortunately, there is only one thing in the entire universe over which you have complete control, and it is your thoughts. If you take total control of your thoughts and keep them focused on what you desire, making them positive causes, the conditions or effects will take care of themselves with the inexorability of a law of nature. The next law is what is called the law of belief. The law of belief simply says that whatever you believe with feeling, and this is the key, conviction, and the more emotion you put into a belief, it becomes your reality. It becomes your reality because you will always act consistently with your beliefs. In fact, your entire reality at this moment is simply an external reflection of your most intensely held beliefs. If you believe something positive or if you believe something negative, or as Henry Ford said, whether you think you can do something or you think you can't, you're right. Our beliefs shape our realities to the extent that we believe something to be true. Our beliefs act as a kind of filter, screening out any information that is inconsistent with our beliefs. We have a deep-seated desire inside of us to remain consistent. So, we always try to see, rationalize, and interpret our world to be consistent with what we have already decided to believe. We develop what are called scotomas. A scotoma is a term in psychology that simply means we develop blind spots. We don't see opportunities and are convinced there are no opportunities. We don't see possibilities for success if we don't believe success is possible for us. However, if we start changing our beliefs, we start changing our realities. Let me give you an example. A few years ago, after conducting a variety of experiments, Dr. Rosenthal concluded that the expectations teachers had about students were having a tremendous effect on their ability to learn and their grade averages. He conducted a series of experiments, and one of them was very significant. At the beginning of the school year, he went to the San Francisco Bay Area, and the principal called in three teachers. These teachers were told that, due to their excellence in teaching, they had been singled out as the top three teachers in the school, and would be assigned 30 students each, from the brightest students in the school, as identified by IQ tests. By the end of the last semester, they would be allowed to teach these students for the entire year. And it was estimated that, according to experts, these students would increase their academic performance by an average of 20 to 30 percent over the course of that school year. Now, the teachers were told that one of the conditions was that they should not tell the students and they should not tell their parents, but they should continue teaching in the same way. The classes were carefully monitored to ensure they taught in the same way as before, but only they would know that they had been assigned 30 bright students each to teach for the entire year. The teachers were delighted, excited, and worked hard with these students. They spent time after school with them and became much more involved in teaching than they had been before. At the end of the school year, surprisingly, these three classes not only led the school, but the entire school district in academic achievement. At the end of the year, the three teachers were called in, sat down, and were told, you've had a good year, to which they responded affirmatively. They were told it was great that these children were so eager to learn. Then they were told, maybe we should tell them the truth. They explained that this was an experiment, and at the beginning of the school year, they randomly selected the names of 90 children from the entire school population and assigned them to their classes. They didn't even know what their IQ was. The teachers were amazed and asked, how was it possible for them to do so well? They were told they were simply the top three teachers in the school. This story illustrates what is called a double-blind experiment. They kept everything constant, except for the expectations. The expectations about the teachers were explicit. We believe they are excellent teachers. The stories we've just explored highlight the incredible power of expectations in shaping outcomes, whether it's in the classroom or in our personal lives. The teachers' implicit expectations of their students unleashed hidden potentials and led to remarkable transformations.
demonstrating the immense influence that expectations can have on performance and achievement. But let's zoom out for a moment and consider the broader context of expectations in our lives. It's not just our teachers who hold expectations for us. Perhaps even more influential are the expectations instilled in us by our parents. From the moment we enter this world, our parents' hopes, dreams, and beliefs about us begin to shape our sense of self and our aspirations for the future. Research has shown that our parents' expectations, whether positive or negative, have a profound impact on our behavior and choices throughout our lives. If we were raised in an environment where we were nurtured, supported, and encouraged to reach for the stars, we are more likely to internalize those positive expectations and strive for greatness. Conversely, if we grew up in an environment filled with criticism, doubt, and low expectations, we may find ourselves held back by self-doubt and fear of failure. So, I urge you to reflect on your own upbringing and the expectations that were placed upon you by your parents. What were their hopes and dreams for you? Did they believe in your potential or did they inadvertently sow seeds of doubt and limitation? And most importantly, how are those expectations influencing you today? As we continue our journey of exploration and discovery, remember that awareness is the first step towards empowerment. By understanding the role that expectations play in our lives, we can begin to challenge and reshape those beliefs that no longer serve us and pave the way for a future filled with limitless possibilities. Well, this brings us to the critical role of expectations in your life. The first part of expectations in your life, number one, and where expectations affect you, is in your parents' expectations. We have found that we tend as adults to try to fulfill or fail our parents' expectations throughout our lives. If our parents were strong, supportive, loving, kind, encouraging, and believed in us throughout our lives, we will unconsciously strive to live a life consistent with those expectations. If our parents were critical, condemning, and complained about our grades and so on, we will find that throughout our lives we tend to hold back. So be aware of that. What were your parents' expectations? Were they positive or negative? Did they drive you or discourage you? And how much are they affecting you today? The second area of expectations is your boss's expectation. In all of our studies, especially in studies on excellence in organizations, we have found that bosses with high expectations have high performance work environments. Now, if you work for a boss who is negative, critical, and condemning, if you work for a boss who has negative expectations or a negative attitude, your performance is likely to be very low. In fact, if you look at the course of your work career, you will find that the times in your life that you have enjoyed the most are working under a boss who had high positive expectations of you and your ability. Isn't that right? The third area of expectations is the expectations you have of others, especially your children, your spouse or partner, especially your subordinates or the people who look up to you. We are deeply affected by the opinions of anyone we respect and the attitudes towards us of anyone we respect. And if you have high positive expectations of the people around you, especially your children, they will rise to meet those expectations. So the basic rule regarding this is to always expect good things from others. In word and deed, continually tell them, I believe in you. And the fourth area of expectations is the expectations you have of yourself. Ultimately, these are the most powerful. If you have high positive expectations of yourself, you will be amazed at what it will mean for your life. Always expect the best. Always expect the best. And here's a little exercise I learned from one of my graduates at one of our seminars. In life, he found that starting each day with this simple exercise and telling himself, I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me today. I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me today. I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me today. This little exercise completely changed his attitude. He spent the whole day with the attitude of someone with a confident expectation. Everything that happened during the day, he thought, maybe this is something wonderful that is going to happen to me. And you know that if you do this, if you say before going to sleep, I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me tomorrow. And if you say when you wake up in the morning, I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me today. And if throughout the day you say, I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me, you will find that when you go to sleep the next night and try this, today is a very powerful exercise. It sounds a bit cheesy, but it's a very powerful exercise. If you try it, you will find that you won't be able to think of all the wonderful things that have happened to you. You will simply be amazed that your parking spaces will open up 
Your friends will call you and you will receive checks in the mail. Your life will be a series of positive and happy experiences. So always expect the best. I believe something wonderful is going to happen to me today. And by the inexorability of a law of nature, I can assure you that it will happen. It has happened to thousands and thousands and thousands of our graduates who will literally amaze you with the effect of this little cheesy exercise. The last law we will talk about in this session is called the Law of Correspondence. The Law of Correspondence says, and is quoted by J.S., as is within, so is without. As is within, so is without. And what it simply means is that your outer world is a mirror. And that's probably the best word. Your outer world is a mirror. And it simply reflects what is happening in your inner world. Your outer world is the result of your inner world. What is happening inside determines what is happening outside. If you want to change your outer world, you have to change your inner world. That means you can look at your words, you can look at your level of health. What's happening in terms of your physical health is largely determined by what's happening in your mind. What's happening in your relationships is the most perfect example. Because you find that when you feel good inside, your relationships are fluid. When you feel negative or stressed inside, your relationships go wrong. Your relationships are a reflection of the image in the mirror of the quality of your own personality. You can tell how healthy your personality is by looking at the relationships. If you change your inner life, you change life. And as the day draws to a close, take a moment to reflect on the magic that has unfolded before your very eyes. Perhaps you encountered a stranger who offered a word of wisdom that resonated deep within your soul. Maybe you stumbled upon an opportunity that seemed tailor-made for your aspirations and dreams. Or it could be that you experienced a moment of pure joy and connection that reminded you of the beauty and wonder that surrounds us every day. Whatever form it took, I hope you embrace the extraordinary with open arms and an open heart. For today was not just another day. It was a day filled with miracles, synchronicities, and blessings in disguise. And as you drift off to sleep tonight, know that the universe is always conspiring in your favor, orchestrating moments of magic and wonder that are uniquely yours. So my friends, carry the spirit of today with you into tomorrow and beyond. Approach each day with a sense of wonder and possibility, knowing that something extraordinary is always just around the corner. And remember, you are the architect of your own destiny, capable of creating miracles in every moment. Thank you for joining me on this journey of discovery and delight. May the magic of today continue to unfold in your life, guiding you ever closer to your dreams and desires. Until we meet again, may you always expect the extraordinary for it is waiting for you just beyond the horizon. Hello dreamers and doers, today we embark on a journey of self-discovery and empowerment, a journey that promises to unlock the boundless potential within you and propel you towards extraordinary success. Whether you're an aspiring entrepreneur, a creative artist, or a determined individual with big dreams, the message we'll explore today is clear. You're going to surprise the world with your success. In a world often plagued by doubt and uncertainty, it's easy to lose sight of our own potential and the impact we can make. But today I invite you to cast aside those doubts and embrace a new paradigm. One where your success knows no bounds and your potential knows no limits. You see, each and every one of us possesses within us the seeds of greatness. Unique talents, passions and strengths waiting to be unleashed upon the world. And while the journey to success may be filled with challenges and obstacles, it is also rich with opportunity and possibility. As we journey together today, I encourage you to envision the remarkable future that awaits you. Picture yourself achieving your wildest dreams, making a profound impact on the lives of others, and leaving an indelible mark on the world because, my friend, that future is not just a possibility, it's a certainty. So, are you ready to embrace your potential and surprise the world with your success? If so, let's embark on this transformative journey together and unleash the greatness that lies within you. It's not what happens to you in life that determines how you feel. It's how you respond to what happens. Two people can have the same experience, but one will overcome it and let it go, forget about it, and move on with their day or their life. The other person will be devastated, angry, resentful, often unhappy for an extended period of time. The same event, 
two different reactions. Your natural state is to be happy, healthy, joyful, and full of emotions for being alive. You should wake up every morning eager to start the day. You should feel wonderful about yourself and the relationships in your life. As a mature, functioning adult, you should do things every day that allow you to progress toward realizing your full potential. You should be grateful for all your blessings in every area of your life. If this isn't the case, it's because you're not thinking correctly about life. Fortunately, what you'll learn today in this video can be very helpful in getting you back on track. Get comfortable and share this video on your social networks. Let's get started. How to find opportunity in a crisis. In a crisis, Brian Tracy, Brian Tracy, gives meaning to everything you see. Nothing is, but thinking makes it so. Shakespeare, the fastest way to transform from negative to positive and free yourself from unhappy experiences of the past is to decide to see your past in a different way. When you practice the law of the situation and exchange a positive thought for a negative one, your emotions change almost instantly. Many people spend decades complaining about things their parents did when they were growing up. That was true in my case. I remember once when I was three and a bit years old and was out with a young woman during dinner. I started to remember and complain about my father for the mistakes he made with me during my childhood. The young woman, quite clever, stopped me and asked, Brian, are you glad to be alive? I said, of course, I really enjoy my life. She then said, well, your father brought you here, so stop complaining. I remember being momentarily stunned and then realizing that she was right. From that day on, I never complained again. No matter what your parents did, they brought you here. They gave you the greatest gift of all, your life. You can always be grateful to them for that. Here's an exercise for you. Imagine that somewhere in the universe, there's a great power that loves you and wants the best for you. This great power wants you to be happy, healthy, and fulfilled. It wants you to be successful and prosperous. This great power also knows that you can reach higher levels of happiness, joy, and pleasure only by learning certain essential lessons along the way. And it knows that you have a perverse nature. You won't learn unless it hurts. You can't learn from reading or watching others' experiences. You can only learn when you feel physical, emotional, or financial pain. It takes pain to get your attention, so you can learn the lessons you must learn. Therefore, in order to teach you, train you, and guide you toward your higher good, this great power sends you lessons, each accompanied by pain, so you listen, pay attention. Norman Vincent Cale once said, when God wants to send you a gift, he wraps it in a problem. The bigger the gift God wants to send you, the bigger the problem he wraps it in. When you view each problem or difficulty you have in your life as containing some kind of gift, you begin to see things differently. The challenge for most people is that they experience the pain, but they're so busy complaining and blaming others that they never see the gift. Think about all the problems you have in your life right now. Now imagine that you've been sent this big problem that contains a gift in the form of a lesson you need to learn so you can be happier and more successful in the future. What is that lesson? One of the most powerful ways to change your thinking and your life is to seek the valuable lesson in every problem or difficulty you encounter. The most amazing thing is that if you look for a lesson in a setback or difficulty, you'll always find at least one lesson and sometimes many more. This video is about how to learn to find that gift that God puts in every problem. So below you'll find an exercise that will help you with this. Pay attention and put it into practice. Exercise. List three setbacks or temporary failures you have experienced in your life. Now you can reinterpret them and see them as learning experiences. What valuable lessons was the great power trying to send you? When you think about your biggest problem today, which usually involves another person, Ask yourself, what is the lesson I must learn from this problem or difficulty? Your first response will usually be simple and superficial. Perhaps it should be more of this or less of that. But now comes the most important part. Ask yourself, what else is the lesson I must learn in this situation? Go deeper this time. The lesson will be more significant and meaningful, if not painful. Maybe you need to start doing something different or completely let go of something then. Ask again, what else is the lesson I must learn? You go even deeper. As you continue asking this question, the lessons will become increasingly relevant and helpful, and often also more painful. Finally, if it's a significant problem in your life that you've been struggling with for a long time, you'll reach the true lesson you need to learn. Typically, you need to change, move away from something, or remove it from your current life. Language is very important in this area. 
The words you choose to interpret an event can trigger positive or negative thoughts, feelings, emotions, and reactions. Words can make you happy or sad, encourage or discourage you, excite or depress you. One of the fastest ways to change your mind from negative to positive when something goes wrong is to change your vocabulary. For example, instead of the word problem, use the word situation. A problem is negative, immediately evoking images of loss, delay, and inconvenience. But the word situation is neutral. When you say, here we have an interesting situation, there is no negative emotional charge associated with the word. As a result, you remain calm, clear-headed, and more capable of facing any situation. An even better word is challenge. Instead of reacting to a difficulty as if it were a problem or a personal attack against you or your business, say, we have an interesting challenge to face. A challenge is something you rise to. It brings out the best in you. It's positive and uplifting. We eagerly anticipate challenges that make us expand and become better by overcoming them. The best word to describe a problem is opportunity. Instead of thinking of problems or difficulties from now on, talk about unexpected setbacks in your life as challenges or opportunities. An opportunity is something we all want and eagerly await. It's amazing how many of your best opportunities first appear as problems and difficulties. Many people have experienced what's called a near-death experience. Usually in the midst of surgery, they die. Their heart stops and their brain wave activity ceases. Fortunately, the miracles of modern medicine resuscitate them and bring them back to life on the operating table. Many of these people have reported a similar experience after they died. First, they saw themselves dead on the operating table with doctors and nurses struggling to revive their body. The second thing these people report is a tremendous sense of peace and relief. Nothing in their previous life seems important. They are never again fully relaxed and experience a sense of bliss. Thirdly, they report seeing a distant bright light that begins to move faster and faster as they move toward this light. The feeling of peace, happiness, and euphoria increases. They feel completely relaxed and in harmony with the universe as the light becomes brighter and brighter. The fourth common occurrence reported by people who have gone through a near-death experience is that, on the other hand, they are asked two questions. What have you learned in this life? And how you have increased your capacity to love in this life? Back at the operating table, the surgical staff resuscitates the body and brings it back to life. Suddenly, the person feels as if they are being sucked back, away from the light, at an increasing speed. In a way, everything turns black. The next thing people remember is waking up in a hospital room with family members and medical staff surrounding them. So, now we know at the end of your life there is a final exam. We even know the questions on that exam throughout our lives. One of the main goals is to develop excellent answers to those questions. This is the big business of life, having these good answers. What have you learned and how has your capacity to love increased? On the other hand, I want to talk to you about how important the power of positive thinking is. Indeed, the idea that your mind can change your world seems too good to be true. I can assure you, however, that I have experienced and witnessed the good that having a positive mindset can bring. Both positive and negative thoughts are powerful, but they have opposite outcomes. Today I want to talk to you about how both can impact you and how the power of positive thinking can truly transform every aspect of your life. Positive thinking means you seek solutions and expect to find them. You don't ignore problems, but instead of complaining about them or letting them dominate you, you actively seek ways to overcome them. You take constant responsibility for your life because you understand that you are in control of how your life progresses. A positive thinker finds the benefits or the silver lining in challenges and expects things to turn out well. Having a positive attitude means you have an optimistic outlook. An optimistic attitude means you have hope, believe things will turn out well, and ultimately, you will succeed. Scientists have been studying the health benefits of positive thinking for a long time. Research suggests that positive people have better mental and physical health and even live longer. Having a positive outlook can reduce the risk of having a heart attack, catching a cold, and being depressed. Positive thinking can reduce a person's risk of dying from serious illnesses, such as cancer, infections, heart disease, strokes, and lung conditions. It improves the outcomes for patients with brain tumors and traumatic brain injuries and boosts their immune system. A positive mental state even gives you a higher pain tolerance. When you have a positive outlook, you are better equipped to face stress and difficulties. 
think more creatively, and are better at problem solving. Thinking positively puts you in a better mood, so you can build positive relationships with coworkers, family members, friends, and new acquaintances. How is a positive mindset recognized? People with positive attitudes tend to have a healthy lifestyle, smile more, are more pleasant to be around, and are calmer under pressure. Someone with a more positive outlook is often willing to try new things, has higher self-esteem, loves to laugh, and points out the silver lining in every dark cloud. A positive outlook is contagious, and people with a positive outlook cannot help but share it with those around them. Positive thoughts are always kind to people and do not speak negatively about themselves or others. People with more positive thoughts have better coping skills and know how to handle stress better, doing things like exercising more frequently and having a healthier diet. Now, as we continue our exploration into the power of positive thinking, let's delve into practical strategies for transforming negative self-talk into uplifting affirmations. As Brian Tracy aptly emphasized, our internal dialogue plays a pivotal role in shaping our attitudes and outlook on life. Indeed, the words we speak to ourselves, whether consciously or subconsciously, have a profound impact on our self-esteem and overall well-being. By replacing pessimistic thoughts with positive affirmations, we can cultivate a mindset of resilience, optimism, and self-belief. But how exactly can we shift from negative to positive self-talk? Brian offers us some invaluable insights and techniques to help guide us on this transformative journey. Instead of dwelling on our limitations and past failures, we can choose to focus on our potential and future successes. By adopting a mindset of growth and possibility, we empower ourselves to overcome obstacles with courage and determination. As Brian so eloquently puts it, we should strive to be our own biggest cheerleaders, celebrating our progress and learning from our setbacks along the way. So the next time you catch yourself succumbing to negative self-talk, remember that you have the power to reframe your thoughts and beliefs. Instead of asking, what if I fail? Dare to ask, what if I succeed? Embrace the possibilities that lie ahead. And watch as your positive attitude propels you towards greater heights of success and fulfillment. When you have positive thoughts, you don't allow your conscious or subconscious mind to entertain negative thoughts or doubts. Positive thoughts can literally be the key to success. After you learn to think positively, you'll notice amazing changes around you. Your brain will actually start operating in a state of feel-good hormones freely flowing called endorphins, which will make you feel lighter and happier. You'll also notice a significant boost in confidence and feel more capable of taking on new tasks and challenges that may have previously been outside your comfort zone. By reducing your self-limiting beliefs, you'll effectively release your breaks and experience growth like you never imagined. Essentially, you can change your entire life simply by harnessing the power of positive thinking. And as we bring our journey to a close, let us take a moment to reflect on the incredible potential that resides within each and every one of us. Today we've explored the idea that you are destined to surprise the world with your success. And indeed that destiny is within your grasp. As you move forward on your path to greatness, remember that success is not a destination but a journey. A journey defined by courage, resilience, and unwavering determination. Along the way, you may encounter obstacles and setbacks, but know that each challenge is an opportunity for growth and learning. Believe in yourself, trust in your abilities, and never underestimate the power of your dreams. For it is through perseverance and perseverance alone that we can overcome the odds and achieve the extraordinary. So, as you venture forth into the world, carry with you the unwavering belief that you are capable of achieving greatness. You have the talent, the passion, and the drive to make a profound impact on the world around you. Embrace the challenges that lie ahead. But they are the stepping stones to your success. And remember, the world is waiting to be surprised by the remarkable achievements that only you can bring to light. Thank you for joining me on this inspiring journey. May you continue to chase your dreams with courage and conviction. And may your success serve as a beacon of hope and inspiration to all those around you. Now go forth and surprise the world with your greatness. Your destiny awaits and the world is ready to be amazed by all that you will achieve.